Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 90. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 9. Hey, we're talking about hypothesis testing, but we got to talk about Excel functions. I'm going to show you for standard deviation known and proportions when we're doing hypothesis tests and we need to use Z, I'm going to show you the six examples of the Excel functions and formulas that you will need. The first one is the test on the upper end. So we need to calculate a critical value if you're using that as your means to come to a conclusion or your p-value. Let's scroll up here. Remember, this is on the upper end one tail to the right. <clears throat> Critical value. You need your alpha. So we'll say we're doing a one tail at alpha equals 1%. The trick here is we want to use, since we're going from alpha to a z for our critical value, number of standard deviations above the mean, we need to use norm s inverse. And it will give us the probability. Since these functions go from negative infinity to whatever uh, probability you put, or for us, negative infinity to whatever uh, value that spits out. We don't want 0.1, we want 99, so we have to go 1 minus this. And so our critical value will be 2.32. Anything above that, we will reject the null hypothesis. The other way to go is p-value. So we have a test statistic. And p-value you compare to your alpha. So p-value we would say equals norm s. Now there's, notice these are all norm for normal, s for standard normal, and we want dist. That gives us uh, the probability. It's asking for a z. There it is, and it's on the upper end, so it's positive. Close parentheses. Now, this will give us the um, probability all the way from negative infinity, but of course we don't want that. If we control enter, we see that's everything from negative infinity up to this. We actually want above that, so we have to 1 minus. So those are the two examples for upper end. Let's look at one tail on the other side, on the left. This is the lower end. Critical value and p-value. Again, uh, or this one will be a little bit more straightforward because the functions always go from negative infinity to whatever value you're giving it, or in this case, uh, whatever alpha you're giving it. All right, so critical value equals norm for normal, s for standard and n for inverse. That means take the probability and go to a z. Notice in this chapter, critical value is a z. Test st statistic is a z also. This is the hurdle point. This is the z, number of standard deviations above or below, for uh, whatever uh, sampling error converted to, or whatever uh, sample uh, point estimate we have. All right, so in this case, we have a test statistic on the lower end. And so our p-value equals norm for normal, s for standardized, and dist. That's the one we use to go from whatever z we have to whatever probability. This one, similarly, also no 1 minus or anything. It's just going to do it from the low end. And boom, 0 0.0058. Wow. That's pretty small. So when we compare it up here, our rule for going comparing p to our alpha, if it's less than, we reject the null hypothesis. For our critical value, when we do our test statistic, if this is on the low end less than, then we go ahead and compare. And if it's less than, we reject the null hypothesis. All right, one more example, the two-tail. So the two-tail test, boom, boom. These are all for uh, sigma known. Uh, we're going to have alpha divided by 2. Now, the critical value, the easy way to do it is just to do the norm s inverse for the critical value on the low end. So you throw in the probability on the low end, and then just do up, because it will go from negative infinity to whatever you put in, so the probability there. And then just do plus or minus whether you want the low end or the upper end. Uh, for p value, the easy way to do it is always to do norm dist and give it the z on the low end. That'll give us uh, 
whatever uh, probability from here to zoop to there, we multiply it by 2, and that gives us the p-value that we compare to alpha. First, we have to do equals alpha divided by 2. And then the critical value. Now, notice I have this one here. That is an uh, alternative. That will give you the one on the upper end. But I'm going to show you the one on the lower end. Equals norm for normal, S for standardized, and then the inverse will give us the uh, Z that we want. I'm going to click on this one. Now, it's going to spit out a, um, a negative value. We can just as easily come in front of here and put a minus. Both of these formulas will work. In fact, why don't I do this one here also? Equals norm S inverse, and I'll do 1 minus. So either way you do it, uh, that'll calculate it. Now, the uh, p-value, we need our test statistic. And this is on the low end. So I'm going to th throw the low end z into our norm for normal, s for standardized, and dist will give us the probability. It wants this uh, uh, z here. And if we uh, control enter and put this one in here, it'll give us that probability. So it might be right there, just that much. But we need we have that much p there and that much p there. Because we originally divided the alpha in 2, we then need to multiply the p by 2 to, to then compare it. So 2, oop, 2 times, <clears throat> and we get our probability. Now in this case, we have our critical value and our test statistical. This was on. Uh, the low end, so we'd have to uh, use this one here, or whatever. It's a plus or minus, so we actually could keep this like this, plus or minus this. If it's in between the negative or the positive of this, then we fail to reject. But this one, way outside. So using the critical value rule, test statistic way outside that interval, so we reject the null hypothesis. p-value, we've multiplied it by 2, so we compare it to the original alpha, is 0 0.001, less than 0 0.01. You betcha. So reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. All right, so that's norm s functions. The uh, different possibilities you will see for hypothesis testing. When we come back, we'll do the t functions. All right, see you next video.